Hi, in this video I'm going to be explaining a little bit about how to draw a mirror diagram for a concave, also sometimes known as a converging mirror. In these diagrams, which are quite different from a uh, diagram that you would draw for a plane mirror, we have to basically approach things in a different way. Um, in the plane mirrors, we have our object and we have our observer and then we, we are the ones that draw the image and then we draw the ray diagrams. On these ones, we go around it sort of the other way. I've still got an object, I've still got a mirror, but instead I draw the ray diagrams to find where the image will appear. Some teachers sometimes want their students to learn um, sort of the combinations of if an object is here, where will the image appear and memorize it that way, which you can certainly do. Or if you follow the rules for drawing them, you could just sort of double check them on the go if you wanted. Uh, in these curved mirror diagrams like this one, we have the principal axis drawn in. And the principal axis is just a place for us to plunk down stuff and be able to do our measurements from. It's not actually physically really something that would be there. I have drawn in my center, which actually if I brought out a ruler and started measuring it, it's actually the radius of this part of the curved mirror. So the radius of a mirror is equal to the distance measured along the principal axis to the center. I've got my focal point. The focal point is exactly halfway between the center and where the mirror meets the principal axis. That point is quite often referred to as the vertex, but we usually don't bother actually labeling it in these diagrams. You could if you wanted to. In this particular diagram, I've placed the object out beyond the center. Usually if we're going to talk about the position of our object, for example, I would describe it as though I was measuring from the vertex going out that way. So I'm beyond the focus, I'm beyond the center, I'm, I'm out there. Okay? That will give very specific characteristics to our image. That's when you get into the whole question of is it real or virtual, erect or inverted, has it been diminished, enlarged, or the same size as it originally was. But for this one, I'm just going to draw the diagram and see where that goes. And then I'll be able to give the characteristics to my image. So for this one, I've got essentially three rules that I can use for drawing my diagram. You can use any two of those three rules for most of these diagrams. You really don't want to use all three rules because a problem is going to kick in for you then. Because this mirror has been drawn based on a circular shape, we get spherical aberration. Because really if I wanted to do this with a good quality curved mirror, I would want it to be more parabolic shaped. In our diagrams, we get basically an approximation of where that image should be appearing. But if you do all three rays, you're going to find that your reflected rays don't exactly probably meet up in the same spot. And so you're going to start questioning yourself about, hey, where exactly should I draw that image? Instead of getting into that problem, just draw two of the rays and you're going to be fine. You might find that you become more comfortable with two of the particular uh, ray diagram rules. And so you kind of stick with those ones most of the time. That, that's okay, but you still want to be aware of all three rules because you might find you're in situations where just because of the placement of the object, you can't do one of the three rules easily maybe, or maybe not at all. So in this diagram, what I'm going to do is start off by drawing a ray that comes off of my object like this, parallel to the principal axis. This is my instant ray of light it can produce an image. So I'm never going to worry about anything crisscrossing over any of those incident rays. It's only a ray that has reflected off of the mirrored surface that can produce an image. And that can be the reflected ray itself or the virtual ray of the reflected ray behind the mirror. But in this one, I've got my ray coming along parallel to the principal axis. A ray parallel to the principal axis has to reflect through the focus. So I take it from there, down through the focus. And I'm going to extend it off quite a bit like that, just to make sure that i got lots of room in my diagram for wherever that image might be appearing. I'm going to draw an arrow showing that that ray has reflected off, so I know that it's a reflected ray. For the time being, I'm not going to draw the extension of that reflected ray behind the mirror, but I might have to. If I find that no reflected rays cross over be, uh, in front of the mirror, then that means something's happening behind the mirror. 
and then I would extend it as a dotted line behind the mirror and start looking over there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rule that sounds a lot like this first one because it was parallel to the principal axis, reflects through the focus. Now I'm going to draw a ray, an incident ray, through the focus and reflect it parallel to the principal axis. We're basically just flipping around the rule on itself. So my incident ray comes from the same location on my object. In these diagrams, we choose a location on our object, and typically it's going to be drawn as a, an arrow. It's supposed to say, hey, this is some object that's upright at this point. And we just do everything from here on the very tip of the object. I don't care about the tail, the bottom part of the object, because since it's resting on the principal axis, that part of it will also be on the principal axis, even in the image. Sometimes people say to me, but look here, I've got rays that are crossing each other. That must be where the image is. But this ray is still the incident ray. So as it crosses, the reflected ray can't be producing an image. Only where reflected rays cross do we produce an image. But it hits the mirror over here, and I know that according to the second rule, a ray uh, that goes through the focus will reflect parallel to the principal axis. So it comes bouncing off like that. Okay? Now I can see where the two reflected rays have crossed over, right here. So that means that since I took rays of light from the head of my object and they're crisscrossing as reflected rays here, that must be the location of my image. Mr. Ray Felice, could you report to the gym? Junior High All-Stars are coming in now. Mr. Ray Felice. So, I draw my image like that. Notice, the tail of the object was on the principal axis. The tail is on the principal axis. But the head of my image, which I'll label with an eye, is down here where the reflected rays crossed. In this case, I have an image that is um, real because it's still on the real side of the mirror. It is inverted and it's not too hard to see that compared to the object, this has been diminished. So it's smaller than the original. So apparently, when an object is placed beyond the center, you produce an image that appears between the center and the focus. Okay? Now, I will show you the third rule, just so you can see what it looks like. But again, remember, I'm telling you that at this point, if this was the diagram you're drawing, you walk away from this. You're done. You do not want to do a third uh, ray usually, just because there will be a little bit of conflict. But the third rule is that a ray of light that passes through the center reflects back through the center. The reason it's doing that is because if a ray goes through the center, as it goes out towards the mirror, it's basically going along the radius. That means it has to hit the mirror basically at a, a point where it would be perpendicular to the tangent of the mirror at that point. It'll bounce right back on itself. So that ray coming down through the center there's my incident ray, reflects back the way it came. Now this is where you can see that they don't hit all in exactly the same spot. But if I had drawn the red and the green ray, my image would have been appearing with its head there. The blue and the green ray, image would have been appearing here. They're all giving me about the same location. So that's all that really matters. It's just kind of more an approximation uh, method than anything. What you might want to try doing is drawing more um, converging concave mirror diagrams like this for yourself just by placing the object in different positions and seeing what it does to the kind of image that you produce. Okay? Thank you.